Hi viewers, another episode of Guest with Nazir. We have personality of the week, a journalist, broadcaster, and a businessman, Mohammed Shabir Mughal. Welcome in our show. Thank you. Please tell our viewers about your early days in this country and your background. I uh, came uh, when I was 15 to this country in the 70s. And uh, unfortunately, I did not get a chance to go to school at that time. So uh, I, I start work. Uh, early, my first job was in a restaurant. Uh, and then I start uh, another job, which is in a, a mill uh, as a weaver. Uh, which is, uh, I, I did about 10 years uh, in the mill, uh, and uh, uh, it was really good. Uh, but uh, again, you know, those days are totally different. If, if you go back and uh, uh, think that those days are uh, very much, uh, everybody is busy with his own uh, business, but at the same time, very lovely. You know, those people are actually meeting each other, greeting each other, and uh, if somebody's uh, come back from Pakistan or somebody going to Pakistan or somebody in a hospital or somebody, uh, you know, uh, ill, so everybody goes and visit them. And uh, this was very, very uh, nice uh, atmosphere. And especially uh, those people who uh, come from abroad, uh, they have uh, different uh, dawats. You know, in, in a time, uh, invitations from one house to another house. And that's why uh, the community was busy working, but same time on the weekend they meet each other. So you came to Sheffield or you came to another city? I came to Bradford, uh, which is uh, known as a little Pakistan. Uh, and uh, I moved to Sheffield in 19, uh, uh, sorry, 2000. Uh, I moved to uh, Sheffield. So how you thought about the media, especially about the print media, because you have started in your early days uh, the magazine. So how this idea came into your mind? Uh, I, luckily, I never stop. Uh, I never signed. Uh, I always working and uh, I, I found different field of myself. Alhamdulillah, uh, if, if, if I go back uh, after the mill, I, I, I did taxi for a couple of years and then I uh, changed my profession completely to, uh, which is uh, uh, film distribution uh, in 80s. Then I uh, uh, gone into the business as a restaurant owner. Uh, from that, when I was doing a restaurant, uh, the media, uh, become aware of uh, that because my colleagues, my friends actually plan to set up a radio station. So they asked me to uh, join with them. So that's like 1988. Uh, and then in 1992, the first Ramadan radio, which is uh, uh, broadcast in the history uh, all over the world, first Ramadan radio from Bradford, and I was the part of that. So do you want to share the names of those personalities who are your colleagues at that project? Yeah, if we uh, look in into the media, there are so many uh, people, uh, but uh, particularly Radio Ramadan, when we started in 1992, uh, uh, there was Haji Nazir uh, Yakub Ali, uh, Masoud Sadak, and Qasim Khan, and myself. We was four, five of us uh, who actually started originally Radio Ramadan uh, in UK. So it was a limited license, or it was how many days it was granted at that time? It was uh, 32 days, because originally uh, Radio 30 those days uh, uh, gave 28 days. But after that, uh, they, they allow us to uh, extra time because of uh, Eid celebration. If we talk about the setting, setting up a radio, obviously we're talking about a very difficult time when people don't have access to money. So how you funded that radio at that difficult it, time? Uh, those days, even we don't know how to apply the uh, radio station or how to apply, uh, get the license for it. 
So what we did actually, we uh, hired a, a, a guy called, um, uh, I forget his name, sorry. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> uh, so he actually filled all the form and everything and uh, we arranged the fee uh, and the, the business community support us uh, for that uh, project. So business community actually paid in advance to us and then we pay the fee and everything. And how many years you did this uh, project in Bradford? Uh, well, I started in 92 and uh, last was in 1999 uh, in Bradford uh, when I was there. Uh, but s uh, soon I moved to Sheffield. I started here in Sheffield. We'll discuss radio later on. We'll move back towards your magazine project. So what was the name of that magazine you published in Bradford? And it was, how many languages it was covering at that stage? I'm uh, lucky in that uh, side because when I was doing a restaurant and uh, I become uh, known with many people because I, I was involved with the, one of the trade association of Asian restaurant owners. I was uh, treasurer for a couple of years. And due to that, I, I was, uh, well, meet so many people. So majority people knew me. Uh, that uh, I am uh, I'm very active in the community. So from that, uh, I develop uh, other ideas. And uh, this magazine, Awaz e Millet, uh, which is I started from Bradford in 1993. And uh, that was uh, something, again, we, we have support from uh, the community, which is a regular basis that the community was supporting. and. Uh, uh, I was running, but same time I was running a restaurant and same time uh, the magazine as well. So what were the main subjects you concentrated at that stage? The magazine uh, have a, a variety of things, religious uh, and uh, poetry and uh, interviews uh, and uh, uh, many other areas we cover, actually ladies and uh, novels, uh, afsanas, you know, so many things we actually... Uh, include in the magazine. Now you're running a community radio, Iman FM, in Sheffield. If we compare these two eras, let's say talking about in 1980s or 90s, and now, what challenges are faced by media in these days? Well, uh, nowadays, because uh, the media is, is a power, and uh, uh, those days people really don't understand about the media. It's, it's new for them and uh, it's, uh, nobody really bother about it. But uh, nowadays, the media is uh, very powerful and uh, as, as social media and uh, print media, all the me media is uh, got some kind of hold on the community uh, where you can actually uh, give them uh, information. Uh, if you give uh, good news, there will be benefit. If you give them bad news, they will be suffering. So there, there are uh, areas you can actually develop the community. If you give them uh, a good uh, uh, news, a good stories, uh, role models, that will uh, encourage the community, encourage the others to come forward and uh, do something for the community and do something for themselves as well. So how many hours this radio is uh, playing the programs at the moment? At the moment, we have, uh, well, community radio as Iman FM uh, is uh, live broadcast. We started from 8 in the morning and finish at midnight. At, um, and uh, from midnight to 8 in the morning is pre-recorded programs continue. So it's, it's like 24 hours. What is the main theme of this project? Are this uh, basically uh, the Iman media, uh, Iman FM is uh, for whole Muslim community residing in Sheffield, Radram, and uh, because we catering for the Muslim community, so the theme is obviously to give them good information about uh, our religion and about our community about. Uh, uh, other uh, areas of uh, uh, like agencies, education, social services, uh, health. So there are so many areas which is need to cover as you already, uh, you covering as a law and uh, the poetry. So there's so many different areas. Again, uh, uh, we try to cover uh, through this uh, medium. And in terms of 
community, what is the response? How you feel the response uh, from the community about your well, project? Well, if, if I go back uh, when I came to Sheffield and started Radio Ramadan, uh, the response was very, very, very low. You know, the, even people don't ring, people don't actually uh, participate. Or, participate or, uh, very hard. I, I, I bring new people uh, and train them to ask them to start the programs. But again, the community was very shy uh, to come forward. But now, uh, with the Iman FM, with the community radio, uh, we have so many people come forward. Uh, they are participating, they are ringing in, they are uh, taking part into the different programs, which is, uh, I think, uh, is very good awareness uh, in the community. For our viewers, especially for the youngsters, what are the main qualities of a, a good broadcaster and a presenter? Well, there's, there, there are a few things, which is uh, commitment is the most important. You know, if you are committed to uh, something, then you have to deliver that. Uh, and uh, contents, very important. Uh, whatever show you are doing, you need to have proper contents. And uh, the timing, that is the most important. So you need to uh, work uh, long before then you deliver the program because you need to research. Uh, if you research, then you are equipped yourself. And that is your, uh, I think, uh, main uh, success. How you see the present legislation and the rules and regulation from the Ofcom for the broadcasters? Uh, and what are the requirements for the the new people who are coming to the media. So what things they should consider when they are joining the media? The uh, Ofcom always have a code of conduct, which is we have to follow uh, every radio, every uh, television. They have to follow the code of conduct from, uh, from Ofcom. So it's, it's, you have to be uh, in line with the code of conduct, not doing something which is harm to the individual or harm to the community or saying something which is, uh, you know, hurt somebody. So we need to be, or any presenter or anybody who like to join or doing the show, they need to be very careful and they, they should have read the code of conduct, which is very important. And what is the uh, ki what, what kind of training you are providing to your presenters in uh, your station? We provide uh, all sort of uh, training uh, from A to Z uh, because uh, if if somebody is new, uh, he don't know anything. So we we uh, show them how to research. We show them how to uh, prepare their program. We show them how to record their program, how to edit their program, how to master their program, and if they are doing live, how they, they can uh, conduct uh, with their guests when they are uh, having guests, so how uh, they need to uh, approach to the guest and uh, how, how they can actually uh, ask them questions. That's very important because if you don't know how to ask the question, then uh, your show won't be the successful. How media can play a vital role to create a cohesive and a beautiful society? I think the media can play a big role uh, to bring the communities together, which is very, very important. We are living in a multicultural society, and it is a very, very uh, major role media can play. And uh, alhamdulillah, we have been uh, running nearly one year now. Uh, our radio did play a major role. We, we had all communities welcome on the radio and they, they come and they enjoy the, uh, our services. So how many languages you are presenting at the moment at your station? At the moment we have uh, eight languages uh, so because uh, I think it's more than ten languages uh, spoken by Muslim community uh, living in Sheffield and Rotherham, but uh, we managed to uh, um, uh, up to eight. We'll move towards your private life. Any uh, interesting uh, incident you want to share with our viewers? Because in your media life or in your business life, you have some incidents you want to share with our viewers. <laughs> 
Uh, well, there is always something happen. Uh, 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 as as you know, I've been <coughs> I've been to the uh, TV station as well, DM Digital. I used to uh, do show on the TV, and uh, one day we we park over car uh, in the car park, and when we came out, the car park was closed down. So it was very difficult for us to uh, come out uh, because the car park was closed down. So we uh, waited, waited there, waited there, and somebody who uh, tried to come uh, from uh, outside to inside who have some kind of uh, access to it. Access, and uh, we just rush our car and just <laughs> go out. When he came in, we, we have to. Uh, that was very scary and very interesting as well because. So you managed to come back to Sheffield? Come back to Sheffield, yeah. And in terms of any message you want to share with our viewers? Uh, I think uh, the message is this uh, that we are living in a multicultural society, as I said early on. We need to bring other communities together. And this is only can happen if you are a loving person. If you uh, create uh, love, harmony, and then uh, everybody will be happy. So what is your vision in the next few years about your project, the Simon FM? I think uh, uh, I, I like to see more developments uh, in, in the project uh, where we uh, can uh, uh, you know have more people uh, joining train more people uh, and uh, those people who are trained they need to move on to the uh, mainstream uh, stations mr shabir thank you very much for joining me and i hope in coming days we will request you again to join and share your thoughts thank you for coming thank you viewers uh, i hope uh, you have enjoyed today's episode and in coming days we'll come and join you again with more guests, more details, and more entertainment. Keep watching Sheffield Live TV.